all that nothingness is the other part of the um, Saba wreck and that's then connected obviously to the wheel so you can see the suspension there on the piston where it would have taken the pressure when it comes down for landing yeah hello to part two we are out on the ashup moor and to be honest we are on the ashup moor <laughs> there is not a path to be seen anywhere at the moment um in fact i'm telling the truth there isn't a path to be seen anywhere i can't see one i know where it is it's just over there and i know we've just come down this steep hill up there now if you haven't seen part one i'm going to put a link up for you you must check out part one first because it tells the story of why we're here and what we're doing i'm out with chris he's come to join me today which is brilliant because i certainly wouldn't be doing this on my own and down there in the middle of all that nothingness is the other part of the um Saba wreck that we've come over to have a look at and to sort of pay our respects and take some photographs and just generally say we've been and seen it. Now, the Jurassicness of this is just phenomenal. This was once upon a time carved out by the Ice Age and it's left rocks up on the top. I think this is the Kinder sort of area, the Kinder Scout area. So I'm gonna do that one day, but probably from the other side walking this way. We're about possibly three and a half miles from the car, maybe three. It's over that hill before the next big hill in the distance. We've got to go back up that way to get home and there's another bit of the wreck up there or another wreck because uh, they were flying as a tandem at the time so i'm going to talk to you next when we get down to there because i just wanted to open this video up and say this is part two and if you haven't seen part one you've got to watch that first because it really does make the story a story So we're back on so just have a look at that rock that's about there if you can see it on this camera it's just balancing on the edge there but it is it's very jurassic parky we're not anywhere near the path but you can see we're now coming up on the wreckage in front of us and uh, there's a wheel which i didn't think you could see anymore um, so the wheel is is still here with the tire still on it which is amazingly impressive um, there's a large chunk of um you know probably fuse large or something now um some big hefty strong metal stuff here uh people will obviously pay real respects you can see the cross but this will is quite an impressive thing to see oh we've got some we've got a memorial plate this is nice this is nice for the family and stuff so yeah very mr d uh, J, J. D. horn from the RAF flying so officer. flying officer is that what it is so he's a flying officer and there's even another little plaque down here on the stone there so very important little places um, and full of history really now you have probably watched part one by now uh, you know that Chris is uh, ex RAF so he's a little bit knowledgeable and stuff like this and he was just saying that this uh, big metals you know like the ironish looking bit um, it was part of the undercarriage and that's then connected obviously to the wheel did you nearly go down that <laughs> oh god don't go down those holes <laughs> or sinkhole in the middle of nowhere yeah this is the wheel and uh, that's pretty disturbing I don't like the fact that someone scribed some initials in it that's really horrible um, but yeah that it's got the braking system on it and that's then this metal part here then would be connected to that bit under there so that's really quite interesting now when we were up the top when we we're up there because we've come down from up the top there we can see a shiny part and i think it's somewhere over there and i've got a feeling that's part of the rotary system in the the, the jet engine um again i'll put it up on the screen what the plane was the saba uh, oh look at that you can even see the the suspension so you can see the suspension there on the piston where it would have taken the pressure when it comes down for landing again that's really quite impressive to see that um yeah and I, I i don't find this as a morbid thing i just i'm very intrigued in its history and i'm it's just amazing that it's still here that we can come and i was going to say enjoy it's not enjoy but come and see 
and uh, pay your respects, you know. So, uh, yeah, really, 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 really cool. I'm very impressed. Amazing. Just walked over to this piece now, and Chris was saying, now, you know, this is a structural part. So this, this join here, you can see by the shape of it, this is actually the tail fin. I'm pretty sure this is where the other side would have come off, and with it being so sharp, not a straight angle, this would have been your your, your tail, your tail uh, fins, tail wing. But let's bring you over here, just have a quick look over here before I get my camera off my back and take some pictures. Um, and it's it's more prosperity, you know, I've just taking them for taking them sake. So again, big part of the fuselage, and there's some big chunks. And he's come over. If you've seen part one, we saw all the wreckage up over the top there. So he's he's hit the bank at the top. And then this is the last remnants coming down over the top of the hill and uh, come down here. So yeah, again, massive, massive chunk of body work and you can see all the hinges. Uh, this, I would have thought, I don't know, I was gonna say this looks like a, it's not a hinge, it's probably just the way it's put together, but it looks like a hinge. Um, it's hard to tell what these parts are, especially because I'm not a, you know, a pilot or anything, but some big 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 but this is part of wing this is a wing because you can see here this is the uh gearing and this part here that's your um oh i forgot what they're called aero aliens a ailerons so that's part of your ailerons that would move up and down and slide up and down and these slide into place these bits here these slide into place into this to lock off the wing so that's actually a big wing section which is um pretty harsh so these are these little bits down here as we spoke in the last video um, Chris was saying that they're probably like a bag tank where they put the fuel um, by the looks of it with the matting and we've just seen it in the end of the wing on that one down there and that's where it would have been it would have been forced in and it would have been carried from that so again this looks like a tail but if that was a tail back there this is a tail isn't it got that sharp angle to it or is it both did both the planes end up down here that's question that looks like tail as well doesn't it with it being so tight you see there it's a very very sharp angle and small so yeah that's it's very hard to work these things out phenomenal absolutely insane but we need to go and have a we're gonna have just have a walk over now and go and see if this is the, the turbine the tail fin yeah i think it is in fact that's very similar to the one that's over there so it makes you wonder whether the two of them have just ended up down here yeah. which would be insane if both of them crashed in the same place another part of the undercarriage another another wheel back there um you can hear the planes flying overhead which is a bit weird so we're just having a look now on this bit of more, see if we can find what that was reflecting before, because it's here. Can you see it? Ah, yes, I can see it now. So we're just making our way over and having a look at what the shiny part was that we could see up on the top of the hill. And it looks like it's in some water or some bog, but we'll have a, have a nose the best we can anyway. We nearly went down another old end. That's two holes he's found. Wowza, that's got to be part of the propulsion system. That's for definite, look at this. Jeez, wow. Wow, wow. That would have been, it's got the turbines in it as well, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's got the rotary blades in there, you can see inside. So it's basically spinning, sucking the air through and forcing it out the other end. And another set of blades at that end yeah wow it's really really good to see this part because i didn't think you can still see these bits so i think it's time to get the camera out take some very respectful photographs i know the conditions aren't good for this it's too nice um but i'm going to take a few photographs just for prosperity and to put up on the screen and show you so uh
Chris was just down close having a bit of a nose and a look and he wants to get a couple of detail shots, which again, I will as well, but he's just mentioned that on one of these fins, and I'm gonna spin you around, you can actually see the writing on it. So let me just spin you around and just see if I can focus in on it and you can actually see the writing that's still on this fin over 50 years, 50 years later. Uh, it's just on that one there, just there if you can see it. Absolutely phenomenal, that is crazy crazy stuff and he was saying that all these keyways they would have had fins in as well so they would have been spinning as well um, and obviously they've always been taken out at some point and you can see how the impact has crunched in at this top corner and sent these fins into the body as it's you know on, the, on its impact but that is insane that you can see writing really is so I think I'm going to get a couple of detail shots as well I like the idea of getting that with a bit of writing i like the way the lights you know shining on there um and i just think it just makes some nice memories there. you see the outtakes at the back just there which is where the air would have been sucked out down the tube There's a path there. Let's go and get on that. Yeah, that's where we need to be up there. Oh no, we need to be up the top one. I've just been, I've just been reminded I'm not talking. Chris has just said, you're not talking too much now, are you? <laughs> I said, I was doing a bit of B-roll. We are actually way off the path and it looks like we may be getting ourselves in a little bit of a situation in a minute because we can see the pathway we decided to take the direct route across country uh, but we need to now go back down there we need to navigate our way down across there. this ridge go around there you're not dropping uh, down we need to get down here and then come across that and hope it's not to too wet go around there the there's two bits to go across side and then see if we can get down here be up there uh, but we do we need to get down this we need to get down this. I'm gonna put a camera away because it could be boggy down the bottom. We'll find out. Oh yeah, I might need two hands. <laughs> I'm gonna to speak to him in a sec. We've made it over this side. We're on the side on the right side. We just need to get out of the out of the ravine now. We should be able to, we should be back on the path. Back in safety. Whatever you do, do not tell Mrs. C what Chris made me do. Because she'd be ever so upset with him. <laughs> Oh, this is what makes the adventures adventures. This is what makes the fun, or puts the foot in fun-ish. Oh, this is steep. Oh, I can see the path. Oh. We're there, we're on the path. Yay! We've made it. We now know we're not gonna fall down a bog. Can you believe we just climbed over that? 
<laughs> Incredible what we put ourselves through as landscape photographers. Strange, isn't it? Right, so it's special tip time. I'm gonna give you a bit of a tip. So I'm gonna spin the camera around and uh, we like to do this every so often. I've just seen, we're just walking up the path. We're back on the path now. We're not far away from getting to the wreck. And we're just looking back. I just like this light here. So I thought I'd get my camera out and take a picture of this path snaking its way back and over the top there. And we've been over the top of that, which is pretty cool. Now, this is a nice shot, but I wanted to get in the rocks over there. So I turned the camera this way. And what I was doing by turning the camera this way, this leading line is taking you out the side of the image. You see, it's not actually helping you, it's not really helping you get to that shot. So what I decided to do was walk over here a little bit and I then put the leading line from here. And because the leading line starts at this bottom left corner, it takes you up through the image and then you tend to naturally come back along that ridge. So it's like um, a triangle. Okay, so there's a little bit of a hint for you. If you can't quite get the shot, move four foot and you can see that line is now lost and it's going off that way. So there you go special little tip for you not bad that is it right next stop is going to be the wreck we've literally got to get up the top of this path and uh, we're going to have a quick look at it and then we've got that good three mile walk back you know back across the moor but by god i'm going to enjoy that cup of tea when i get back to the van and i'm even going to make this gentleman one because he definitely deserves one he said to me just now he said come for a stroll he said come for a little stroll across the moors you know five well, how long is it now what's, what's the time i don't even know what the time is <laughs> Half past one. So we've been out since about half past seven and we've just been walking literally non-stop. So yeah, that's what happens when you come out of me. Sorry. So I am extremely glad that I came with someone else and I finished this journey after a while, you know, the way I started it. In that very rainy low clad cloud and mist because this would have been very hard to find in those conditions it really really would so i've actually used google maps again to actually find this location because where i thought it would have been it wasn't it was actually on this other stone path so when we get to that first sort of cairn the t-junction it's actually back on yourself um sort of 500 yards and we're just coming up on it now and again it's it's down in the in the actual recess so unless you're actually walking upon it you wouldn't actually find it so we're just coming off the path now to have a look at the rest of this and there's an engine down there this probably isn't um part of those two because it's not a jet engine the same as the other one that looks like a prop engine so this is probably another wreck altogether um yeah propeller yeah, so this is definitely a, a different flight, a different plane. So it's not part of those two. They did end up over that way. Um, so this is actually another wreckage, which I've got no history or details on because it doesn't actually say anything on, on the Google Maps to tell you what it is. So uh, I will get the camera out again. I'll take a quick shot of it down there. It's, there's not a lot of this one, but we've got an engine down there and we've got uh, this big part of the, I don't know, the fuselage or whatever it is. It's um, So the rest of it we we have no idea where it is it could be anywhere um chances are it's probably been taken away definitely a um, propeller uh, yeah engine down there it's nice that someone's got a poppy Pin still inside. Because yeah, not only that, I had to rotate. I'm on different uh, programs, but never actually seen one close up. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot to it. Yeah. That is there, that. We're just admiring the uh, engine at the moment in you know in such a state, but there's still parts of it. You know, the stainless steel um, tie rods and the wire the wire locks. 
to stop things coming undone you've got the cotter pins and things like that inside you know inside the actual piston housing and stuff you can still see them all you can see these here they're so shiny and you know stainless steel is what it is but all these things were put on there to stop the bolts and the screws because of the vibration of this engine so they were put on there to stop them and these are your piston heads for the ones that are actually on the downstroke and they'll be on yeah yeah they'll be on the downstroke and they'll be tucked in there um yeah it's pretty amazing it's it's phenomenal to see it really is i don't think this thing's been sat here for 50 years as well it's just insane but what a dangerous piece of land to fly over um you know if you watch my last week's video or the week before when i went to the bomber uh, that's four miles from here maybe and then we've got this one and the other one sort of a mile away over that side so all in such a small space and apparently there's 120 crash sites over the peak district so i will have a go and see if i can find some more because they really do intrigue me and i love going and you know if it is just paying respects and just having a look and just just you know ticking them boxes to say that i've been there and, and you know i've found them and seen them and it's uh, it's quite interesting really it gives me a purpose and a reason to go out for a decent walk but yeah quite um quite quite amazed all right So, with a mouthful of jellies, we're done. We've uh, been had a look at this one. If I found any information, it would have been up on the screen for you, but there isn't a lot on this, so I don't know. But yeah, it's quite uh, fascinating to have a look at. So if you know of any other wrecks that I haven't been to, um, of any kind, cars, planes, trains, automobiles, let us know. I'm... Uh, intrigued to see him i'd love to go and have a look so drop us a line uh, leave us you know leave us something in the comments tell us where they are or give us an idea and i'll comment you know i'll contact you all right and uh, get the information from you so i'm going to end now now we've been there you've seen a couple of shots we've got a nice long walk back only about three miles it's not far is it and i'll see you next time Ciao for now, thanks for watching, and yeah, please do let me know if you know of any other places you think I might be interested, even old buildings. Bring it on, I want to see them. Bye bye. As per normal with my videos, I've just got a little bit of a, a tag on on the back, and I'm just going to spin you around just to show you the, the distance we've got to walk back. And this is only halfway, so if you can see in front of us there, the path just leads on into infinity. And there's some people up there way up in the distance and i'm going to maximum zoom in on the lens and you can see that the path goes on and on and on and it just goes over the moors and there's nothing here to see literally only the pathway to walk on and then we've got roughly half that distance again once you get to the top of that brow where it disappears into infinity so yeah wish us luck because both of our feet are going to be aching by the time we get back we've been walking for quite a while now since the last saw you we left the wreck we come from that high point there which is where you double back on yourself come along this pathway which is like the never-ending path to doom it just seems to go on and on and on but all the cotton grass is out and it's doing its best little thing to you know keeping itself looking pretty uh, the heather's just coming out as well which is nice i think i probably mentioned that earlier the pinks and that's starting to flow uh, the hillside in the background is looking pretty stunning with the light on it we've been really lucky with the weather it's been really good thoroughly enjoyed being out today it's been a really good day the time's getting on as well so i'm quite hungry i'm looking forward to some food a cup of coffee and uh, a good sit down get the old boots off put the legs up and stuff like that hopefully you've stayed with us on this journey this adventure um it's been a been a different one 
out to look at some plane wrecks. The last three videos have been wrecks, or these last two together have been wrecks, and the one previous that I've done, which is going out tomorrow morning, but you probably won't see this one for the next couple of weeks, so I'll tag you in the other one so you know where it is. But yeah, it's been really good. I've enjoyed being out with my stick stuck. <laughs> Don't get your stick stuck down the hole. Um, really enjoyed being out with Chris as well because he's got some knowledge on on, on flying and things as well, which has been really good. It's definitely put a different insight onto what I've been looking at um, and telling a different story to me, you know, so it's been really good. Some of these stones are a little bit loose, so if you do come across here, be prepared to be stepping on a bit of a wobbly one. But in general, 99.9 .9 in the path is amazing. And uh, thanks to the guys that have put this down, because without this, this journey would be horrendous, because it's bad enough as it is. We've got a long way to go yet. We're only halfway here this more so i am going to end the video now i'm going to say goodbye so thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and that thumbs up is always important if you don't give us that thumbs up if you don't give us the likes then the video doesn't catch the algorithms and if it doesn't catch the algorithms youtube doesn't really care about it so it's you guys that help this channel to grow and drop us a comment um, i always like enjoy you know enjoy reading your comments and i'm sure i tried to end the video earlier on and i did a bit of a mention about let me know if you know of any areas that I might like. Old houses, old planes, trains and automobiles or anything of interest like that. See you soon guys. Ciao for now.